Hey everybody, I'm going to give you a little short walk around of our wood processor here. Now this is, uh, this is in its kind of travel form right now. So the, uh, the loader is, is off. And we have the feet down here just for, uh, to keep it uh, upright. Um, now the, uh, they're trailer jacks and they, uh, they'll go up and down with the machine. Um, now we can put them down and get it all leveled up when it's in, it's in place. We uh, go around here, put this thing down. So what we have to do is pull the pin out here. in okay and now it's ready to go now when this cylinder goes out we designed it so that when the loader comes up these rails are vertical with our machine so we can just roll the logs off horizontal whatever <laughs> what we did is we just mounted the uh, 360 here to it um, just to give you guys an idea of how it works we got our mount set up with pillow blocks so basically the saw just goes up and down and the down would be the cut uh, the, there's been people that have said that it doesn't really work very well um, but for us honestly it's done just fine the, uh, I guess the, the problem a lot of people have with it is they don't think the saws will be reliable enough chainsaw for a couple years with it and never had more issues than changing the uh, the gas and chain so what we do take the saw off and just pull the pull the pin slide the saw out it's as simple as you can change put fuel and uh, and bar oil in Remount the saw. So over on this side. So as a uh, as a one one person operation running it, we have our splitter lever here, and it would be an auto return lever. So you can you can run the saw with with one hand and run the lever with the other. Or uh, this lever here is for our loader cylinder. So up and down uh, we got our hydraulic tank and our hydraulic filter for advancing logs it's just a simple roller conveyor just push the log along and with our engine here we have our our cover just pull the power off. You guys will look at the engine. Eight and a half horsepower Briggs. And that's that's been plenty of plenty of power to uh, to run the machine. The jacks here. Built the uh, the frame and can bolt the the jacks in. Now these are just standard old trailer jacks. And we use our, our chainsaw tool here. Simple as putting the jack up and down. Now when we put it down, I try to put the uh, put most of the weight on the jacks. We get it all leveled up. Just keeps it a little a little more stable that way. 
We have our adjustment stop set up. So right now, it's approximately 16 inches from the bar cut to our stop. And we can go all the way up to 20 inches. And we have a size maximum of about 14 inches from here down to where the log is set to be, uh, to be pushed. Now if you guys at home are looking to build something like this, if you're looking for the budget build, I would definitely suggest uh, going on Kijiji Craigslist or talking to your neighbors and see if you can pick up a, a used wood splitter. Now with the, with the wood splitter, you basically need one where the ram would push the wood through. A lot of them nowadays that you see, it would have the, uh, the splitting on the ram. Won't really work for this, uh, this type of machine. Um, for us, we, we picked up a the used utility trailer, cost us a, a couple hundred dollars, picked up the, the wood splitter, had the engine, the wood splitter, the tank, everything right with it. I think that was probably around $500. As far as metal, we purchased uh, some used metal at the scrapyard, another, you know, a couple hundred dollars in metal. Um, the Princess Auto supplied us with the um, the valve and we bought the um, the lifter cylinder at Princess Auto as well and all the all the hoses that we needed so I'd say all in all not including my time we probably have about fifteen hundred dollars in uh, in parts and equipment into the machine here that would that would not be including the chainsaw now that's I guess your your choice of chainsaw something something in the 70 cc plus range would definitely be recommended for a little more life expectancy and reliability we've had a lot of issues with the uh, the bars wearing out prematurely so a good way to avoid that is make sure that your whatever you're using for your your feed rollers and your bar are nice and square to each other you get off of square even a little bit you're you're going to start uh, angling and making a, a gap in your bar rails um so that'd be that'd be something to adjust yeah as you can see we've we've shimmed everything up to to make sure that we we keep it nice and square with each other